You're just trying to catch me off guard by pushing the button. And we're live. My uh, nose got itchy for some reason. It's driving me nuts. How's everybody doing? Uh, sorry. I, my nose got itchy. This is uh, Dylan and Leslie YouTube channel. Uh, we, for those of you that don't know, live in a motorhome full time. And we talk in broken sentences. Yes. No, we don't. Not really. No, not really. And so anyway, we do this live stream once a week. It's kind of a new thing. We're putting out some videos. We'll talk about some of that video content tonight. Been like a month or has it only been like three? Weeks? I think it's been like three. This is a few weeks we've been doing it. Like three or four. I don't know. Regularly. We used to do a bunch of stuff. And <laughs> we and, still do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. We just don't tell you about it. Exactly. So we're trying to tell you about it more. That's the whole point of this channel. Um and to just share with you what we're up to. And so you saw the thumbnail. Um, we test drove a couple of vehicles today, actually. We looked at a bunch of different stuff. Um, my idea was, I had this idea that we should go look at basically everything that you can tow behind a motorhome. That's what really fueled this whole thing. Okay. So I think we should go look at Mini Coopers mm. and those little Fiats okay, and everything. Like, let's go look at all the stuff. Okay. Um, maybe even, uh, like, I don't know. I got to look at the list because it changes every week or every year. But <clears throat> we started with the stuff that we were personally interested in um, the most. I'm actually interested in Mini Cooper. I don't want to buy one, but I think they're neat. So I want to go check it out. And I really want to drive a fiat abarth so hmm. yeah so we started with obviously because we have a jeep wrangler unlimited rubicon um so we started with that uh we didn't get to drive one because they didn't have one we already know what those are kind of and those are a little bit more readily available but broncos are hard to find even we didn't look at Wranglers. Well, we... No. We looked at a Gladiator today. Yes. That um, is not a Jeep. I'm sorry. I agree with the snobby Jeep wave people who are like, I can't wave at the truck. I think it's awesome. She doesn't like it as much. I don't like it as much. It looks weird. Yeah. Long wheelbase Jeep shouldn't be a thing. Well, you're kind of right. I mean, I get it. People wanted the Jeep truck for years. It was in concepts and people were doing like custom builds and yeah. for decades people wanted that thing. Um, anyway, so we, we looked at one of those a little bit today more because we have a JK. So we have a 2018 early, well, it's a early 2018. Mm -hmm. That is the changeover year from the JK to the JL. We have a video about that on our channel, why we bought a JK instead of a JL. Because we yep. could have bought the newer one, but we didn't. Um, but the thing <clears throat> that we would love to be different in our Jeep is not different in the new vehicle. So it was like, mm, what's the point? Yeah, so let's talk about that. So for those of you that do RV or have found us from the RVing side of life, you know that you have to put a Jeep in neutral. So the way you tow, and for those of you who don't know, the way you tow a Jeep is you um, put it in four-wheel drive and you put the four-wheel drive transfer case in neutral. So it goes two high, four high, neutral, four low. So you put it in the neutral. What that does is it disconnects the motor and the transmission from the back half of the transfer case so that your propeller shafts, as they would call them in England, we call them drive shafts here. Um, and your axles and stuff can spin freely while you tow it down the road. And then the weird thing is, is that you actually put the transmission in park. Shut the car off, put the transmission in park, and you tow the vehicle in park. It's kind of weird. Um, Jeeps have, for about the last 15 years, I guess, probably since 2000. Three or something? Whatever. Anyway. Since the JK. So maybe it was 2007. 
Anyway, they have a cable actuated four wheel drive lever and it's terrible. So when you go to put it in four wheel drive, it's real squishy feeling and real, like you have to like really kind of hold it in the right spot. For like $400, they make a linkage thing that you can change out and make it heavy duty so it works right. The new Jeep is exactly the same. I got in a Gladiator this morning. I put it, tried to put it in four high and then in neutral. Never could get it to go in, in a brand new truck. I was so annoyed. I was like, well, if this is going to be a big pain, because you have to use it. We have to use it once a week. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I mean, I've owned this stuff for many, many years and I've had just about every new process transfer case in just about every vehicle I can think of. And it's always, this Jeep thing has always been a thing. So, um, it's a Jeep thing and I don't understand <laughs> why it does it because it's super annoying. Anyhow. So we looked at the gladiator. We did. And we were like, mm, nope. Well, I was like, mm, they're still cool though. But you were like, nope. I, I mean, I was like, nope, before we got there. And then we got there and I was like, mm, maybe. And then when that whole four-wheel drive thing worked the same, I was like, absolutely not. Because I'm not going to get in something else and have the same problems. And from an aesthetic view, it didn't like everything was like orange. It was oh, that line. They were Mojave's. We looked at the Mojave's. Yeah. yeah. And everything is. So it's like this beautiful. We looked at. A blue one. A blue one and a gray one. The gray you can get by with orange accents. But like turquoise, seawater, blue. Like I don't know what color that blue is. It's gorgeous. And then it has orange inside, and I'm like, this is Yeah, it horrid. was weird. It was weird looking. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So, and then we went to the Ford dealer. And the Ford dealer had two four-door Broncos. And I'm going to tell you what the Ford dealer told us today about all this Ford Bronco stuff, because it is insane. There are videos coming out about all this. Yeah. We're just giving you a sneak Yeah, we have vid here. we shot a whole bunch of stuff. We actually went and looked at a bunch of motorhomes today, too. So those are coming out in videos. So I think what we're going to end up doing on this channel a lot is going to be like, I swear, I don't want to call it anything, but it's going to basically be called, without being called, It's Not a Review. <laughs> because... It's not necessarily a review. There are millions of reviews on the internet about the Jeep Gladiator, about the new Bronco, about this motorhome, about that, whatever. We just want to tell you what we think is cool and what we don't think is cool about it in real life. Because, like, we live in a motorhome and we drive a Jeep. Like, we do this every day. And so it's a different kind of perspective when you just walk into something and you're like, oh, I, there's no way I could live with this. Like... You read it on a spec sheet and it's one thing, but then you like live it and it, it changes, it kind of changes it. Like, um, well, you know, a good example was that, is that, um, that new camera that I got, that DJI Osmo Action 2 camera, according to the spec sheet and all the problems that everybody's having on the internet, you'd think the thing was a terrible thing. But we used it all day today, and it was amazing, and it did exactly what we wanted it to do in real life. So, you know, and the vehicles and all this stuff is the same. So you're going to see a bunch of stuff where we're just looking at stuff, and we're going to share it with you. And it's not a review, but you'll get an idea, I think, at least what we think of it. And, you know, All right. What we're into. So let's talk about the Bronco. Well, let's talk about getting to the Ford dealership and looking at a Bronco getting there yeah because you went there with the intent to look at a bronco correct? i did mm -hmm. and we looked at a bronco and we walked all around and in and mm -hmm. then we were like mm. okay yeah she didn't like you didn't like it at first mm -mm. it's 
I don't I, know what I expected. I don't know why I didn't like it. It it is very boxy and Land Rovery, like European looking. Um, you're never really a fan of that, right? I so here's the thing I thought of is Traxxas came out with a one tenth scale Ford Bronco. You know, the rock crawler mm -hmm. RC car. And when I saw it in real life, I was like, it looks like a plastic toy. It doesn't feel like that, though. No. It does look. But when you walk up Out of to, this world, like, a, it's not a classic. I guess I, I kind of expected that, too. Like you expected it was, sort of a vintage feel to yeah, it. Yeah, I expected and it, wasn't. it to be like, oh, they brought the Bronco back. And it was like. They made a curvy Land Rover. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what I thought too, and it and you want it to be like classicy vintagey, and it is way more space agey than it, yeah, than you would have thought. Yeah, and the materials in it are not vintage feeling at all. They're all twenty first century materials. That grill feels sort of plasticky and cheap, and those little hoops on the hood, those are supposed to be like you can anchor down um, like uh, brush cables and stuff. They're flimsy. They're not strong. So, you know, there's various things about it that you're just like, okay, it's just a, tr it's just a normal 2021 anything, really. Um, and then you start the motor and it sounds like a buzzy pile of garbage. Those Ford four cylinders are so cool. We'll get to driving them in a minute. The motor is great, but it sounds like a four cylinder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I mean, I've driven a lot of cars and the minute you get in it, it feels and start it. It's like, like, it's, and I wonder if that's like our generation, right? Because like four cylinder wasn't, a great motor when we were younger mm -hmm. right and it does like i don't know it's almost like reminds you of that so you're like oh i'm gonna have this super slow dumb car i mean we've had a lot of four cylinders that sounded really good like volkswagens and oh, that's true. all the european stuff it just sounds made me think of something old like it was gonna start ticking or something i don't know yeah it just didn't yeah um it, but we didn't drive it because like I was kind of turned off to it. Yeah. And one of the other vehicles that was on our list was a Ford Ranger. And because um, my brother has one. My brother has the turbo four-cylinder four-wheel drive Ford Ranger. And they had one there. And um, so we drove that and hated it. I didn't like. Okay. Hate is a strong word. Okay. I will not buy one of those. It does make really good power, though. Yeah, it's fast. But it does not feel like a truck. Mm -hmm. It feels literally like a Ford Escape with a bed on it. Mm -hmm. It does not feel like a truck at all. And it doesn't feel like... I want it to feel like a truck, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we drive a Jeep now. I want my I want it to ride better than my Jeep, but I want, still want it to feel like a truck. Right. And it rides more like a car. Yes. And... It has the 10-speed... So the, one of the reasons we want to drive the Ranger is because the motor and the transmission are the same, quote-unquote, as they are in the Bronco. The thing is, is that in the Ranger... It's, so let's say why you didn't... Okay, are you It sucked. There? Yeah. Um, it has a 10-speed transmission with that four-cylinder, and it was all snatchy and... Like, you could drive it at 70, 80 miles an hour, and it was great. Tons of power... You could pass anybody you wanted to, shift it down nice and smooth, but driving around um, town at like 25 to 35 miles an hour, it felt like a dual clutch, like an old mm -hmm. Volkswagen dual clutch, like super snotchy and snatchy, and it never knew what gear it wanted to be in. Leslie says it's like riding with an old lady. Yeah, like riding with your grandma who like 
you know, puts on some gas and then lets off the gas and puts on the gas and lets off the gas. And you're like, just drive. And so I was literally like, I'm out. If this is the same transmission and motor that's in the the Bronco, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't even want it. I don't even care. Um, and we got back to the dealership and I don't know, we were standing around and I think it was literally like, I don't have anything else to do. You should just drive it. Oh, the salesman? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, yeah. Why don't you drive it? Just drive it. He's like, I know you're not going to buy it. Just drive it. So we're like, okay, we'll take it for a ride. The Bronco? It was so good. Whatever axle ratios they're using, whatever, uh, obviously, tire size and wheel weight, um, all that kind of stuff, completely changed it. It's perfect. It's so good. And it could be the one we were driving, right? Because I imagine that one was heavier than the other one. Yeah, because it had bigger tires and stuff. I didn't think about that. I didn't so think about that you were either. Just describing but, the, it. but the axle ratios and stuff make a huge difference, right? So, like, if you Is have... Is that based on tire size? No, it's based on, like, whatever off-road package it has. So if it has like the Jeep Rubicon kind of package, which is the big bend with the Sasquatch package, the Sasquatch package is what makes it have like, I don't know if they're 410 gears, I can't remember, but the Ranger is like 335 yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. Okay. So, you know, it, it just completely changes how the transmission acts. It changes how the thing drives. The wheel weight was different. So the brakes felt different. They weren't so on and off. Like everything was so awesome. And the cool part about the Ford is there's a, instead of dealing with your transfer case all the time, there's a button in your display that you hit a button and put it in towing mode. So it will actually electronically just put itself in the mode you need to put behind the motorhome in one shot. Yep. Um, fantastic truck, man. So the only problem is, is that they don't have any with hard tops and we cannot have a soft top because I want the security of a hard top. You know, if I have a guitar with me or a camera with me or something, I want the security of a hard top. Um, so we can't have a soft top. He told us that hard tops avail. If you do not have one on order from like a year and a half ago, if I went in there today and ordered a hard top Bronco, the way I wanted it, it would be mid 2023 before I saw it. Yep. On top of that, if you see a Bronco at a dealership right now and you want to buy it, this is what is happening. They're allocating a certain number of Broncos to each dealership that gets one. They are forcing each dealership to keep that Bronco for six months for a test drive vehicle, for a demo. And then at the end of that six months, that vehicle then becomes available for sale as a new car. It is not a demo. It is not used. They sell it as a new car. Um, even though it's been being test driven for six months, the, the Jeep that, or the Bronco that we were looking at today had 340 miles on it or 380 miles on it. And it had been there five months. It was not going to be available for sale for another month. If, and the person I was talking to today told me he heard of a dealership that this happened. If the Ford dealership sold the Bronco before that six months, they would get their franchise revoked. Yeah, they're not playing. It's a weird deal. I don't know if that how long that's going to go on, but any Bronco that you see at a dealership right now, as you, a, you probably can't go buy right now. No, you probably can't go buy it. And when you do buy it, it's basically used. Yes. And and he told me. That when I looked at the sticker price, the salesman was way helpful. Long story. Long story. Um, he said, if you look at the sticker price, the MSRP and the sticker, the window sticker, 
he said add $6,500 to that because that's what the premium is that they're getting on him right now. He said the dealer that he heard of that got shut down, he said, I think they're an Alfa Romeo dealer now. <laughs> the dealer that lost their Ford franchise over this whole deal sold a Bronco for $15,000 over MSRP before they were supposed to and they lost their Bronco. They lost their Ford franchise yeah, over. Not just their Bronco. They lost yeah. They lost the ability so, to be a dealership. So it's really weird. It's a weird deal. And because of the hard top thing, I just don't see it being a realistic thing for us right now. Like I really want one. I think they're really neat. Um, but I don't know. There's a few things about it that I'm just like a little iffy on. And there is, um, so there is a six speed Bronco available. Manual, yeah. But there isn't any, um, those don't come out any faster. Um, and they do not make the Ranger in a manual. No. A manual Ranger would be perfect. Would be great. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome. Because then the problems that we don't like about the transmission wouldn't happen because you'd have control over it. Mm -hmm. um, you want to walk through some of the things people are chatting about so it's not, not yeah. relevant? Sure. Um, so Charles, um, I'm, a I'm assuming he's referring to the Bronco since that's the title of the video. I had one in the shop. I thought it was cool. Not sure I would want something on a new platform. And then um, he said three years old. Give them two years to fix all the bugs. Um, somebody else said, Dennis said, I've made the new model mistake twice. Shame on me. So have you ever bought first year model of something and had a problem with it? Um, Because you kind of have that as a set rule too, right? Yeah, like I do. You don't like first I don't model. Like, I don't like first but, year model. So for instance, the Bronco is on what chat is it it's not it's a, brand new no it's it's on the ranger platform but it's and the motor's not new no the motor's not new yeah the transmission's in every f-150 ever yeah so it's not really um, new no but the architecture is different because those doors are new like the way the whole truck yeah. works the top half of the truck all works is all different so have you ever had a first year um i was trying to think I had, I don't think so. Was our red Volkswagen first year? No, those came out in 2012 and we bought a 2013. Right. I had, um, the, my Buick was the first year. Uh, and you had a bunch of trouble with it. No, Steering rack and stuff? No, I had one problem one time. Oh, okay. And it was in getting a tire changed. Like it was no big deal. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and my grandma had the same car. And she never had any trouble. That's right. Yeah. Like Lucerne. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a first year. I, what ends up happening with me is I end up having the last year before they just before they change it. Like our Jeep now. Yeah. We we bought the last year of our Jeep JK that we have now. Yeah. And good then points. they're talking about the Gladiator. I think it looks cool, but it's not a Jeep and it's not a truck. I could see myself driving one of them. Um, Jeffrey Egan said he'd like it if it was a real pickup, like the old Jeep pickups. And they're talking about Jeep had a sort of truck before. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so we're also still talking about first year model. We bought the first year tiny four by four Jeep Renegade and it was in the shop for five months out of 12. Found Oof. out it was basically a Fiat 500L with some Jeep like panels and badging. Took a loss and sold it. That was Dennis. Yep. Um, so then Rick popped in. He said, he's like a bad rash. Just kidding. And then he said, is your, he says PV standard. And would that matter? And I don't know if he means RV or if he means P. I don't know. I tried to ask and he didn't tell me what he means. So. No, our RV is an automatic. It's a Ford chassis. Yeah. Um. People are saying the dealer markup on the Bronco is ridiculous. Um, Every new vehicle is like that when it comes out, and it's hot. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is so hot, man. And then they're talking about El Camino. It's like that wasn't a truck and it wasn't a car. So here's the thing about the Gladiator, and everybody says that, but the Gladiator actually has the back half of a half-ton Dodge Ram, and it can tow a bunch, and it can haul a bunch, even though the bed is physically smaller. 
Uh, we were just looking at that today because you can get uh, just so this is something I want to look into uh, is so in the United States right now you can get a tax write-off on a heavy vehicle meaning it has to have a gross vehicle weight rating of 6,000 pounds or more and and that's right now that's the only category that you have to fill of course a Jeep Wrangler is like 5600 so of course that's not gonna be but a gladiator is 6200 so it has a 6200 gross vehicle weight oh yeah he's he's asking is our personal vehicle standard oh no no no, no. it we've had lots of five and six speed cars but this one is not I wish it was yeah so he said does it matter so I'm assuming he's no asking for towing but not in this case like Jeeps have a way for you to flat tow still right since we have a transfer case we can right make that happen and most of the towable vehicle stuff is either a five speed or a six speed manual or it has a transfer case mm-hmm People are laughing about manual transmission vehicles being a theft deterrent these days. Um, I got, so S Bennett 423. Hi guys, new to the channel, but not new to your content. The motor home you guys have, what's the name? Uh, it is a 2014 uh, Forest River Georgetown XL. So the funny thing is when I first read that comment, I was like, oh. Everybody names their RV. And then I was like, oh, wait, I don't think that's what he means. Yep. Or he might. That's funny. Yeah. Um. Yep. We went and looked at a couple of motorhomes today, too. It was kind of fun. Jeffrey Egan said, I won't buy a first year anything, but my Road King has the first year Milwaukee 8, and I haven't had an issue with it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that used to be way more of a problem, and I wouldn't have worried about it until they had all this hardtop issue and hold up. So here's the other thing, is the thing about the Jeep is, I bought that Jeep two years ago, and I can sell it. For a few thousand more than what I paid for it two years ago. And Jeeps have always kind of been like that. And one of the things I worry about with the Bronco is. As it becomes more popular. Is it going to end up being just like a Ford Escape and they're just going to be everywhere. Or is it going to be a fail because they're having so many problems with it, but either way, it's not going to hold its value near as good. This is my guess. And this is what I worry about. I don't know if it's true because I can't tell the future, but I worry that it does not hold its value near as good as my Jeep does. Cause right now I could make money on my Jeep. Um, and I worry about that with the Bronco thing. A, a lot actually that's like a because it's very rare that you can be ahead on a vehicle like that but we are so I don't want to mess it up <laughs> so Dennis said I actually like the gladiator and would get one but the current vehicle shortage means super high markup at most dealerships I want to tow my bumper pull RV so after today like being around folks in a dealership because obviously we haven't done that in a long time I feel like yeah they're trying to have a markup but they also have a desperate need to sell stuff yes so I don't know I think they will probably try to push hard on you but I really think if you could probably get the deal you need to get because they have to sell vehicles I mean these people are like a third of what they normally sell so 
people really yeah, the they Ford, gotta sell stuff. The Ford dealership today, the guy at the Ford dealership told us that they're selling a third mm -hmm. of the cars that they were selling a year ago because of availability. And so their sales manager told them just sell cars. Because here's the thing is you know that the car business is funny. Like people think that the dealership makes money off of the car, but they they do and they don't. So you you know your dealer markup on a car is usually not that much. It's usually like I don't know. If it's a fifty thousand dollar truck, it's probably like I don't know, thirty five hundred bucks or something. It's like not that much. But then there's, then they'll end up selling you, you know, where they where they'll make their money is in the financing because they'll get points on, like for example, if you finance a vehicle through Ford Motor Company or whatever, the dealership will get a kickback basically on any vehicle that gets financed through particular programs and stuff like that. And then they will also get money on their extended warranties and all that stuff. And of course, service contracts, all that stuff. They also get a hold back from the dealership, from the, the manufacturer. So not only do they make the markup on the car, but they also make a percentage back. So it could be like a two or three percent hold back from that's what they call it from the manufacturer so the manufacturer is actually paying them to sell that car so they're making money every which way but they have to sell the car even if they give the car away for cost they'll still make money as long as they sell the car and then work all the angles so don't ever let anybody tell you don't ever let anybody try to like muscle you into a deal based on, well, there's only one of these in the entire, you know, unless it's something. And as soon as a salesman is like, man, I've got to eat too. You need a different salesperson. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as it, cause, because yeah, I've done this many, many, many times. And the thing is, is that when, when these people try to sell you a car, they know that they're making all that money on the back end. And they don't know that you know that a lot of times. Because a lot of times people don't do all this research and all this homework. I mean, I've bought 50 cars, man. Like I, And I used to work in the car business. So, like, I know. And dealerships hate me, man, because I will ask the questions. I will literally go in there and be like, what is invoice on this? I can't tell you that. And I'll ask them a lot of times I'll ask them what the what the leasing factor is. Like when you go into a car dealership and you're you're like, what is the residual and what's the lease factor on this car? They're like, oh no. They're like, what? I'm like, go in your book, look in your table, and tell me what the residual and the lease factor on this car is. Well, the lease factor is X amount of percent and the residual is this percent. I may not be leasing the car, but that tells me how much money they got in it. That tells me a lot of stuff. And so it also tells me how good the car does in resale. Yep. If your lease factor is really high and your residual is really low, then don't buy that car. Because if you're going to trade it in 14 months or two years or three years, you're going to lose your butt on it. Like. That's why I buy Jeeps and Toyotas and stuff. Like, those are all things, but man, they don't like to hear that stuff when you come walking in there. They don't like that. The guy today was like, what are you trying to, like, take my, all my money? And I was like, no, I just want to know. Like, tell me. Like, what is the dealer markup on this thing? I'm not talking about invoice to sticker. I can, I know that. Yeah, and it wasn't even like we were trying to make a deal. He already, he already told us. He could not sell us what we wanted. Yeah. Like, he's like, so there's no deal happening. Yeah. I was like, I know what sticker window sticker is. Yeah. And I can go to Edmunds.com and see what the invoice is in the car. That's easy to do. I can figure that out. I want to know how much you are doing as a dealer premium on top of it. And he's like, oh, he's like, let's walk outside. 
Yeah. <laughs> and we walked outside and we looked at the window sticker and he says, okay, see that number right there? And I'm like, yeah, it goes, it's like, it's an easy five grand. And then he's like, by the time you do all the stuff, he's like, figure 6,500. And I'm like, no, screw that. Yeah. We're waiting. We're waiting. So anyway. Paul McNary said, when they say they have to go ask their manager, I say, I will go with them. Yeah, that. Well, let me tell you the story. I'll tell you the rest of the story. So, um, we pulled into the dealership, and I said I'd like to look at that Bronco, and he's like, "Let me go get the keys." And then I said, "Do you have a four-wheel drive Ranger? Because I'm really interested in that too. My brother has one, and I w I want to look at both of them." And he's like, "Um, I don't know." I don't know if we have one. I haven't shown a Ranger for a while. He's like, yeah, I couldn't tell you. And I was so, that just, oh, it, not doing your job is probably one of the things that makes me, and I literally like walked away from him before I said anything rude. Well, we went to verify. And I, no, and I walked across, the, I yeah. started walking across the parking lot and I was literally thinking to myself, don't make me go over there because I can t see from here that that is the truck that I want to look at. It was the right color and everything. Right color, right model, right trim level, four wheel drive, had all the things. And I knew it was in stock. And I even said that to him. I said, well, I looked online earlier and I think that gray one over there is what I want to look at. And he's like, um... Yeah, I don't know. I walked over there. I walked back in and he's gone. And there's a guy standing there. And I said, Are, is there a sales manager around? And he says, I'm the sales manager. And I said, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I said, your little dude over here that was standing out here doing nothing. I laid into him. I was like, I wasn't mean, but I was like, your little dude is standing out here. I asked him if I could see a truck. And I knew before I asked him that you had it in stock. And he didn't know. He didn't come and ask. And he just blew me off. And it's right there. Yeah, and I, I mean, and they have all of like 20 cars. Yeah. Period. They are, and he's like, and I told him that. I was like, if he doesn't know, he needs to learn. Because you only have like 20 cars in stock. You should know everything in stock. Like, this is ridiculous. I said, this is the kind of thing that as a consumer, and I said, and I'm not trying to be mean here, and I don't mean to be like really, I was like, but this is the kind of thing that really pisses me off because he should be doing his job. And the guy looks at me and he pulls, he had a mask on. He pulls his mask down and he goes, this is the kind of thing that really pisses me off too. <laughs> and he goes, how can I help you? And I was like, I really want to drive that Ford Ranger over there. And he goes, I'll be right back. I had to leave and go outside because he got on the PA in a very angry voice. So the entire neighborhood heard it. I want all salespeople to the office right now. Like he was like, he got everybody in there. And then this little dude, same guy, his name is Sam. Kudos for him though. Like had the guts to yeah. bring me out the keys. And he's like, I apologize. I misunderstood you. And we were walking out to the car and I said, dude, it's not about misunderstanding. It's about that you were standing there doing nothing. And I asked you a question. You didn't know the answer. I said, the thing you could do is go inside, answer the question and come back out. And he's like, yeah, I just didn't know if we had it. I was like, and I stopped him in the middle of the parking lot. And I was like, look around. You only have like a dozen cars in, in here. It is your job to know all the features. It is your job to know who, what's here, everything. I was like, it's your job. And he's like, you've done this before, huh? And I said, yes. I have. I said, come on. I'm going to show you how to sell a car. I literally said that to him. I was like, I'm going to show you how to sell a car. Let's go. And we walked out to that Ranger and he was so cool. And he worked with me the rest of the day. And it, when it came down to like 
tell me when the next Bronco come in. I took his, got his card and he was a really good kid. Like he really, he did want to learn, but it was like, uh. But I get the impression that, you know, everybody learns different, right? Like yeah. he probably needed that time and he probably needs somebody to walk around with them. I, yeah. Even like when he was talking about being bored at work. There's no reason you should be bored at work, Mm-mm. whether there's no people there or not. And then when he couldn't use the website, like, why aren't you taking the time to learn the website then? Like, yeah, you don't have time to be bored. No. And that's what I told him. I was like, you need to be learning all this stuff. Yeah. And I said, and now I'm going to ask you a bunch of features about this truck and I bet you're not going to know them. And I was like, tell you the truth. It's okay. Cause they're kind of way deep in there. This is like next level stuff. I'm not holding that against you. Yeah. I was like, but you really need to think about what you're doing here. This is what, this is your job. This is what you do. And he's like, man, I really appreciate this. He actually said that. He's like, I appreciate this. And I appreciate you talking to me about it. Um, and he's like, what else can I do? And the rest of the day, yeah. man, he was very on. open. And I, I'm he curious too, cool. like are, are people normally, so if you get to the point where you test drive a vehicle, right? Are most people just like enthralled with a new vehicle? And so they're just like, oh, it drives great. Because when we got back, even the sales manager, when we got back from the truck and he heard you say, I didn't really like it. So he asked me, because he saw me pull up. He was like, well, what did you think? And I was like, it's not what we wanted it to be. And he was like, oh. Like, he was really like, crap. Like, you just said it wasn't a bad... Oh, and he didn't want to hear it. He walked off. I know. <laughs> no, it was interesting. And I almost wonder if there is some sort of complacency, too, because they're just dealing with what they have to deal with. That's why I didn't want to be super hard on anybody, because I know people are just dealing with what they have. Like, they are, like, they don't have very much inventory, and they don't have, they're probably super bummed out, because they're not selling any cars. Yeah. But that's not how you handle it. Like, anyway, that's the whole story. And that was the second time, because we went to the RV dealership. I'm going to make myself self sound like a total jerk, but we went to an RV dealership. Oh, my gosh. And we walked in, and the lady's like, there's no salesman. They're all in a meeting. Which is fine. It was Which early no big deal. on a Thursday morning. Like, who's expecting customers to be there? She's I get like, it. She's like, what are those? After I asked her, what time's the sales meeting over? And she didn't answer me. Yeah. And then she... And then she's like, what are those? And I'm like, oh, we just, you know, vlog and document wherever we go and look what we look at. And she's like, I don't think you could do that here. <laughs> and I was like, okay. We and we left. <laughs> like... And I left a nice Yelp review about that. Because if I was a salesperson working in that environment and found out the front desk person said, don't look at something, I'd be upset. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, if somebody's going to come in there and post on their social media that they came to your dealership and had a blast and looked at a bunch of stuff. Isn't that what you want? Like, right. You know, I would have thought that that's what you wanted. It was weird. And even the fact that um, you can't personally document, like, what if I really like something? You really expect me to spend the amount of money some of this stuff costs right now without, like, looking around or mm-hmm. seeing what I like or being able to compare. Like, that just seems very unreasonable. So we went to another RV dealership and a girl comes out and she's like, um, and she was totally the opposite. She's like, we have coffee in here. She's like, we have drinks for y'all if you want them. She's like, but just everything is open. If it's locked, it, that means it's sold. She's like, take your cameras, go around, take pictures, do whatever you want to do. She's like, and I'll check back with you in a minute. Cause the boss is here and I'm probably going to want to get away from him <laughs> once in a while. And she did. And everything was fine. And it was awesome. And I was like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway. And then the huge big news that I teased from the last video is Leslie got her first set of cowboy boots today. That was what the tease was. I heard the lead up and I was like, what is that about? Yeah. I did. I bought another set of cowboy boots too. I bought another pair today. But again, so we're talking about customer service. Um, that is why I got a pair of boots, though. Yeah. It's because that woman running that store wanted to take the time 
wanted me to like what I got. I would have never bought the right size shoes if she weren't there to help me. Um, I don't know. And just, taught her how they're supposed to fit. Yeah. Taught her how you're supposed to walk in them. Taught her like all yeah. the things like how they're going to yeah. break in. Like she did all went above and beyond. Really nice. Really yep. nice. It was really fun. So anyway, that was our day. Has anybody else got anything relevant? I know um, this is so rambling and funny and weird, but this is our What life. brand of boots did you get? You know, I can't even remember now. Um, Yours are Los Altos? Yeah, they're Los Altos. That's right. Which I... I don't know what mine are. I don't... Um, they're not super high-end boots. I have Lucchese's, and they are amazing. Um, the Los Altos boots that I have are actually really nice, though. I, I would not have bought them if I'd seen them online or something. But when I put them on, I was like, oh, man, these are... And they're um, ostrich leg. So they're not, they're not the full quill, like little dots. They're the ostrich leg. They almost look like gator, but they're, they're ostrich leg. And, um, lemonwood pegs, double welt. They're like really well made. And the lady was telling me about, I never really messed with this brand before. And they were not expensive either. And I was like, wow, I put them on. I was like, yeah, these are good. And they're going to break in really, really well. I have a problem. My right foot is a little bit bigger than my left foot in a weird spot. So not all shoes fit me right. So when I put a set of boots on, when I put a pair of boots on, I'm like, dang, these are good. And then I knew I had to buy them because it doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, they're really good. I really like them a lot. So. Everybody says they like our rambling. Oh, well, good. I mean, this low key form is really enjoyable. Well, we're going to have a bunch of other videos coming out. I got a new camera lens coming Monday. Thought it was today. Thought that I was, was supposed funny. to be today, but I really wanted to use it today. It would have worked awesome shooting those motorhomes and stuff. But. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do. We're so just... yeah, I don't know how many videos that's going to make, but if we split it into four or one five, per, probably three or four, it yeah. pretty good. It'll be good. Yep. And I'm, it's, they're going to be kind of, that's the other thing is I'm probably going to have to put like an intro on it so that people that aren't familiar with what we do, because we don't do like a whole, Hey, this is us. And here we are. We just go and do it and have the camera rolling. Like, so it's kind of, it's more real life. Like it's more just like, I don't know. Jeffrey Egan said, so they're like the Harley Benton of boots. <laughs> No, because they're not made in China. Yeah, even that was interesting. Like, this woman... You know, most business owners are, like, profitability, and and she was like, no, I care about who's making them and where they come from. Yeah. I don't yep. know. She was just a very interesting woman. I she really was. liked her. Yeah, she was a neat lady. And But she didn't want you to have to... She didn't want you to spend too much money. She was like... Even for her, she was like, because I told her, I was like, I want her to be in boots that aren't going to give her a bad experience because I want her to like them if she's going to like them. So don't put her in something cheap that, you know, like a cheap guitar. Like, if it hurts your fingers because it's not right, you're never going to like it. So I didn't want the cowboy boots to do the same thing. So I was like, give her something good. And she's like, I know, I know. But she's not going to pay for any brand name or anything. But these are going to be a good enough idea. They're like the Epiphone of boots. I don't remember what they were. I don't either. They're made in India. Oh, are they right here? Maybe. And they're, they're and they're can't reach them. Um, you know, they're not the best shaft leather and stuff. But what'll happen? But I'm also is, really hard on shoes, so yeah. I'm really curious, like how they last. Are, and, yeah, would expensive boots be a wise decision for me, or should I buy cheap boots and just keep wearing them out? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. I can't answer that. But I tend to be really hard on shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. So anyway, it was fun. We had a really fun day. We took. She had the holiday off, 
and I had made so many pickups this week and worked so hard that we just took the day off. And Which she has, made today really weird because then we were like, wait, it's still Thursday. We mm-hmm. have to go live and I have to work tomorrow. So it's totally thrown my whole week Yeah, off it's a weird week. one. And then next week you have Thursday off mm-hmm. and I have the same thing. I have to make a bunch of pickups early in the week. We're going to take Thursday off again, hopefully. I am, period. Yeah. And then the following week, we have the whole week off, which is really exciting. And we're going to be at the beach. And we're going to be really at the Outer Banks of North Carolina, so that's going to be really fun. We are uh, right outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, by the way. We try to tell people that. Oh, yeah. Um, In this live stream. We'll be here for another week. Yep. So there you go. Now you're um, all caught up. Rick Bonneville popped into oh, this hey, Rick. Good point about customer service. This is why I will buy a set of pickups from Dylan. He took five minutes of his busy day to physically answer some questions. Give your man a hug later, Leslie. Who's my man? I don't know. <laughs> Have I met him? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Rick. I appreciate that. That was the last time we were at Red Robin. He called me. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Jason Albert said I'm hard on shoes also. Yeah, I don't know what... What was the last... So, the last pair of boots I bought. Borns. Dylan was like, just buy... So, I also tend to buy cheaper shoes because I know I'm hard on them. Mm-hmm. Like, to me... Sh- this sounds terrible. To me, shoes are disposable. Like, you get a new pair every year. Like, because you're going to wear them out. And maybe it's because I've always... He says it's because I've always bought cheap shoes. So I spend more than I'm probably comfortable with on some boots. And he's like, these will last forever. Like, literally. These will last forever. They're supposed to. Them things ain't going to last forever. Now that I have these, I'll probably throw those away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's probably true. They don't last forever. I don't know why. So it's not. So then it makes me not want to spend money on shoes because I just know. So, except for. I've discovered there is a reason you buy hiking shoes. Yes. Yeah. And we've hiked and climbed across many things I would have never done had I not had grippy shoes. Just the confidence that you get from having proper shoes for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, really random, I'm sure. Cool. Well, thanks for hanging out, y'all. Anybody else say anything last minute? That's about it. Um, nope, they're just saying they enjoy us and look forward to our Insta pics, postings, and live streams. Um, Rick said he bought his boots at the Calgary Stampede. Beat that, Dylan. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm Thanks for hanging out, tired. you guys. Yeah, we should go to bed. Thanks, y'all. So we can get up and actually work tomorrow. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, we will see you in the next one, I guess.